Hello, my beautiful, wonderful subscribers. Today, we are going to be doing a video I'm very excited to get out. For those of you who are familiar with the channel, you know I'm very devout to a few authors. That's why this channel is so hyper-focused on just a few series at times, because I really am loyal and like to get through an entire author's back catalog and just express my thoughts and opinions on them in depth. And today, we're going to be talking about one of my all-time favorites, which you already know. You read the title, you saw the thumbnail. Stephen King. I've kind of developed my love for Stephen King as the channel has grown. He's become just uh, someone who haunts my mind with his brilliant character work and understanding of human emotion that I just do not see mirrored in many, if any, other authors. But the most common question I get asked whenever I do a Stephen King review is, where should you start? Where should you begin to read the Stephen King multiverse? And this is a question I hope to answer in depth today. Because Stephen King has written one of the most complex intertwining fictional universes ever created. This began all the way back with his first novels and has just continued on until his most recent releases. They are all kind of connected, but don't worry. It's actually not as hard to get into as some people think. There's not really a beginning. It's more of a mishmash of an intertwining web of just convoluted, crazy, brilliant ideas. Though, don't just think you can pick up any Stephen King book and you're getting quintessential Stephen King. And that's where the difficulty does come in a little bit. Stephen King likes to experiment. As many people do try to just pin him down as the spooky, spooky, scary clown man, he's done a very good job, and his diehards fans will back me up on this, of branching out from that stereotype. He's written incredible stories across genres, but today I'm going to break down five picks that are all great starting points for getting into Stephen King, and let's go ahead and start with the first one. This is a fantasy channel, big surprise, and I'm sure many of you just want to read more fantasy, and if you just care about getting another fantasy series under your belt, one of the greatest of all time is Stephen King's take on kind of the Lord of the Rings is what people claim, The Dark Tower. Hour. A mind-bending, trippy, weird, but absolutely fantasy story. I am a big proponent of weird, out-of-the-box fantasy needs to have a rising because fantasy has a problem where it does become formulaic at times. If you want to break out of that formula, there is arguably no better way to do it than the Dark Tower and follow Roland as he chases down the man in black. Now, what I will say at the end of this promotion of the Dark Tower, yes, if you just want another fantasy series under your belt, the Dark Tower is a great way to go because in my opinion, it's in the top 10 written of all time. But that does not necessarily mean it's a great starting point for Stephen King. So I'm only recommending this for people who don't really care about getting a Stephen King fix, but more or less just want to get a taste and continue their fantasy journey. Those are the people who should start with Dark Tower. So moving on to my second recommendation, I will continue for people who like the fantasy ideas and the huge stories with characters you can just read about endlessly and dive into the overarching mythos and background and setting as deeply as possible, but still also want to really understand Stephen King. Now, we're fantasy nerds. We like absurdly huge books where you can just get utterly and completely lost in the story. We want to read for pages upon pages. That's why The Way of King makes this noise when I drop it. It's huge. Luckily for us, Stephen King likes drugs, <laughs> liked drugs, and wrote some truly huge phenomenal stories during his bender days. For example, it makes this noise when I drop it. Just as big. And if you are a diehard epic fantasy fan but want to understand Stephen King, there are no two better recommendations, I'm gonna cheat and put two here, than The Stand and It. I have tried to choose between these stories many times, and I cannot. I can say with a slight sub-recommendation within this recommendation, if you want to go full-on weird Stephen King, go with it. But if you want to go full-on genius Stephen King, go with The Stand. Those are two very different appeals, I understand, but this is the way to go. If you are someone who likes epic stories in terms of just something you can spend countless hours thinking about what just happened, the wider implications, it and the stand 
are masterpieces. Both of them are perfect scores in my book. I'm obsessed with them and think about them probably once a day. I do assume more people will be intrigued by The Stand at this point because it is just kind of played out in pop culture right now. It seems like I can't go a day without seeing Scary Clown Man pop up. So yes, I'm going to go ahead and say for this one, go with The Stand, especially since we're about to get a CBS miniseries adaptation of The Stand, which I'm very excited for. Good luck, Josh. Can't wait to see more and more about that. But moving on to our next recommendation, we have easier introduction, Stephen King, right? Like not everyone wants to pick up one of these. Not everyone's a psychotic fantasy nerd who can spend hours every day reading and rethinking and reinterpreting one story. And for you, I have a bit of an easier introduction, but still an absolute masterpiece and debatably just as good to better, depending on your preferences, than The Stand. And that's The Shining. Well, The Stand comes in at a ungodly number of pages. I'm not going to look up the exact number because it varies on the edition. The Shining is a much more reasonable four to 500, depending on which one you pick up. Still a big book, but not something that'll take you months to get through. There's a reason that one of the greatest movies of all time is based off The Shining. It's just a chaotic masterpiece. It's interconnected to the wider Stephen King universe heavily, so it's a great introduction in that sense where you'll want to learn more and pick up more Stephen King books without a doubt, but it stands on its own as a complete work that needs none of the wider Stephen King universe to stand on. It's just a deconstruction of a man and a descent into madness that, in my opinion, has never been rivaled in execution. Stephen King's character work is really why he is such a great horror author. He gets in people's heads, and in The Shining, this talent is exemplified beautifully. There's a reason so many of the top 100 AFI films of all time come from Stephen King. I'm talking Shawshank Redemption, Green Mile, Misery, The Shining. Stephen King knows how to write human emotion in a way where you will feel your own issues, past problems, and traumas somehow exploited through his genius. And that is my very awkward transition into the fourth category. So up to now, we have three choices for you. Diehard fantasy fans, don't care about King at all, just go for Dark Tower. If you want more of a huge overarching story that's similar to a lot of fantasy you've read, but you want to experience King, go for The Stand, or maybe It. The easy just introduction to quintessential King, you have The Shining, which will also lead to some beautiful doorways to his wider interconnected universe, and might kind of push you to reading Dark Tower because you want to figure out how all this stuff is connected. And then finally, my personal pick. So I'm going to get a bit personal here, and I'm sorry for that for those of you who don't like that, for why Pet Cemetery is my personal recommendation. It is a purely brilliant example of how Stephen King understands human emotion. I personally have lost a few friends to suicide. It's the hardest thing I've ever had to deal with in my life, and it haunts me still today. I've also lost a couple friends to just accidents, which harkens a little closer to what this book is actually about. But Pet Cemetery is not necessarily Stephen King horror. There's not that much that's actually scary here, besides just how disturbingly accurate Stephen King depicts mourning, grief, the insane flood of emotions and complete numbness you can feel simultaneously when you've dealt with the loss of a loved one. And that is why Stephen King's Pet Cemetery to me is such brilliance, because it brought up things I didn't think I still had to deal with and made me realize, wow, I'm not over that person's death. It's still very close to my heart and maybe I need to go talk to some people about it. For those of you who don't know, Pet Cemetery was inspired by a real life incident that almost happened to Stephen King. His child almost ran in front of a semi truck and almost died. Stephen King being the kind of man he is, he decided to write a story based off of that fear, that moment. What if his child had ran in front of the truck? That idea is explored to its fullest, the grieving process and just the Thoughts you have when you've lost someone like that. The lengths you know you'd be willing to go to to bring them back. And if you want to just understand why Stephen King is a genius when it comes to dealing with human emotion, there's no better example in my mind than Pet Cemetery. And in the final note, I'll leave you with this one. There is a bit of a trigger warning here for all the reasons I've talked about. It deals with some very heavy subject matter. And if you don't think you can handle that for various reasons, 
be careful. It has a very strange difference of reaction where almost everyone's lost someone, but the people who have lost people really close to them and maybe still are dealing with a little bit, I've found a hundred percent of the time have very strong emotional reactions to Pet Cemetery. And two final things when it comes to Pet Cemetery: Stephen King himself did not actually want it published. He considered it too horrifying to have released. Some people consider that kind of ridiculous having read it, while others kind of understand. And on the final note here, the Pet Cemetery movies have not done near justice the source material at all. On a more positive note, the final book I will be recommending is for those of you who are not interested in Stephen King for his horror. You just want something more Stephen King weird and brilliant, but not scary by any means. Even though Pet Cemetery is not really scary, it's more just disturbing. Actually, many Stephen King books aren't really scary, they're more disturbing. But if you don't want disturbing at all, you just want, wow, brilliant, deep, huge, and epic, I can't think of a better book, really, I've read in the last few years for that kind of categorization than 112263. The basic premise of 112263 is an attempt to stop the JFK assassination, and it's just fascinating. If you are a reader who appreciates following great characters and magnificent character work, this is one of Stephen King's best yet. I don't know why this isn't talked about in the same sentences as The Stand and It. Maybe because it's newer, but I found 112263 to be on par with Stephen King's best works throughout his entire career, proving he still does have it up until the release of this book. And I'm excited for his next release to see if he still can top himself. The main protagonist here goes through emotional struggles, and you understand him in such a real way. I just... I, I enjoy it so immensely, and that will be the final recommendation I have. If you would like a thriller more than a disturbing horror trip, 112263 will scratch that Stephen King itch for you. Yes, there are people who are watching this video who just will not vibe with Stephen King, but I still think it would be a mistake not to give one of the most iconic American writers of all time at least a shot. Give him a chance or two, pick up one or two of these books, and grind your way through them. I have a suspicion a majority of you, like me, will absolutely fall in love with the man's writing. I've linked down below affiliate links to purchase every single one of these books. It helps support the channel if you do buy them through those links, so I'd appreciate it immensely. It doesn't cost you anything more at all. Anyway, guys, thank you so much. Like and subscribe if you have not already, and hit the Patreon if you want to support what I do here. Have a good one, y'all. Peace. I have had an insane flood of Patreon support, and I need to give a lot of shout-outs. You guys, it means the world to me. Uh, Kevin alums, you're a high-tier Patreon. Thank you so much. Dejelaine, Dejelaine, I hope I'm saying that remotely right. Awesome $10 pledge, high tier. I love it so much. Thank you. It means the world. But Dubious Zinks, my gosh, thank you. Uh, when I saw your donation, I literally choked on my coffee this morning. Uh, wow, you are you are an angel and a saint of the channel. Thank you so much. Oh, I can't tell you how much it means. And you guys are a large part of the reason why I'm able to go full-time starting September 20th this year.